So, welcome team and nice to meet you. Thank you Hi, so Regina. much for your time. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for your time and uh, for this uh, conversation first and then uh, for your warmly yes that uh, we are going to make a Bulgarian uh, gatherings for B Bulgarian participants uh, in the 11th of November. Lovely. So, yeah. So I would like to just to ask you a few questions. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, what is the story behind the name team? How long do you want it to be? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> well, a long story or a short story? Because of course, as everyone- you like. As you like. Because <laughs> some people have a long story and some have a short. Mm. Um, <laughs> so, um, I grew up uh, in Cambridgeshire, north of Cambridge, in um, in the flatland that's called the Fens. It's very much like Holland. If you've ever been to Holland, yes, I've been. It's it's just like Holland. It's all reclaimed uh, land from the sea. It would flood every winter, and so it's absolutely flat, featureless, very empty. And um, although I have, I went to university and I, I moved away. I've, I, I'm back where I was born. In fact, I'm speaking to you now from the house where I was born. That's so lovely. This is, this is my mum's. This is my mum's house, and uh, here I am. So um, my dad died about five years ago, and um, my mum's still quite fit, but I'm kind of her carer. Mm -hmm. So I spend quite a bit of time here with lovely. her. Lovely. Um. So and, uh, I and went. What I, as a boy, I was very, um, I couldn't sit still. I was very uh, hyperactive, which is ironic now because I hardly move. Um, <laughs> but as a boy, I was very much into sport or anything active outdoors. I was never indoors really. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I loved sport. Um, my dad was a professional footballer. My brother, my older brother was a professional footballer. And so, of course, I wanted to be a professional footballer and um, I wasn't quite good enough to be a professional footballer. And so uh, I thought, how could I get paid to uh, do sports all day? And so I decided to be a PE teacher. And so that's when I went to university and studied sports science. And I was a, I was a PE teacher for 20 years. Um, until injuries more or less stopped that. And then I was a classroom teacher. I taught geography. And uh, then I taught religious education. Interesting. And uh, philosophy and ethics. Um, and became more of a thinker, really. I guess um, the philosophy and ethics made me, I was always a questioner, even as a child. I was always asking why. <laughs> those really annoying children who when they're told to do something wanted very good reasons why that or why do people do things well that doesn't make sense and so I was always a questioner and I think with the philosophy the questioning um, became more intense um, I was married quite young um, I've got two grown-up daughters from my first marriage um, um, and then uh, I got divorced and uh, I remarried and I've got two small sons, um, five years old and one and a half years old. Cute. Um, so well, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really quite busy, even though I'm retired, I don't work. Uh, I took early retirement from teaching. Um, I see. And now um sporting wise because my legs are not very good they're just good enough for walking but not running um i used to play a lot of football tennis um a lot of sport in general and now i just play golf so i love golf i play golf at least twice a week lovely <laughs> so basically which, you... which is not you know as most people say well that's not very spiritual is it I went, oh no <laughs> yes. That's what, oh, no. that was it's not I spiritual. supposed to say. Yeah. It's, not, it's not spiritual at all. <laughs> and yeah, of course, the whole notion that some activities are spiritual and some aren't 
is completely nonsensical. True. <laughs> I, either, either everything is spiritual or nothing is at all. And I've never really understood what spiritual meant because this um, dichotomy, this separation between material and spiritual is, I, I always had a sense that it was nonsense. And that actually there isn't the material and the, because what we, what we really mean by spiritual is the unknown. And uh, as if there is a difference, there's the known, which is material, which is nonsense. We don't know the material at all. We've made that up. And then there's the spiritual that we don't know. And it's all mysterious. Well, yeah, they're, totally not, they're not two. <laughs> totally makes sense. Totally resonates. So basically you're, you're not living in a cave. I'm not in a cave, no. <laughs> Lovely. So, no, mm -hmm. actually, I mean, I feel, I feel my life is much more full without work because what most, pe what most people do is fill their life with work. Whereas life is absolutely overflowing without work. Yeah. <laughs> okay, could you, could you tell us more about your path? What, uh, how did the search begin? What was wrong? Um, how did this search begin? Well, I would say the essence of being self, of being me, is being a seeker. So you could say it starts about one and a half years old, two years old. From then, in, from then on, you're a seeker. Once you have a sense of self, a sense of me, of being separate, then you are, you're forever seeking completion and wholeness from that time on. That's only a story. I mean, that's not true either. But if you look at if you look at children, children are seekers. We always say about children being innocent and pure and open. That's that's true to a degree, but it's because the self is still forming. It's not as concrete. Sure. You know, it's still yeah. it's still developing a solid shell. And so there's much more openness and freedom still. But what what self tries to do is create itself create something really very real and consistent and to, to maintain that sense of uh, continuity mm. where in fact you know when we talk about the openness of children that's when there is no continuity there's only this and this isn't continuous anyway um <laughs> so my I, I guess it really started so it started it was I was always seeking really questioning and you really all that seeking means is questioning trying to find answers yeah. Yeah. as if life needs answers um which it doesn't obviously but me me won't have it because I feel insecure without answers answers give me that sense of solidity and security that I crave self craves that 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 sense of this whole notion of groundedness, you know, I know who I am, I know, I know where I am, I know what's happening. It's all, it's all illusory. And of course, self ultimately self knows it's illusory, but is in complete denial of it. It's always pushing it away, pushing it away. And um, so I would, but in earnest, in terms of non-duality seeking, I, there was a, there was one event you could say uh, an awakening event. When I was with children, I was with a class of um, 30 children and I was leading them in, on an outdoor pursuits walk up some, it was in Derbyshire in a um, national park, Peak District National Park. It's very beautiful, mm -hmm. but not, it's, um, um, so we were walking, just hiking really. And um, we were walking up, um, an escarpment, a, a slope that was rocks and trees. It's now, <laughs> the actual place is now the um, opening page of my website. I thought that would be amusing. So I went up there, there this summer to revisit. It, it, it became my special place because this special event happened. And um, <laughs> it's quite funny because I mock the whole notion of special events and then, and yet I've put that on my website and the irony of it is not lost on me or some other people who know me quite well. But as I walked up, um, 
and I've got I've got 30 kids trailed behind me. Um, there simply wasn't any separation and it was glaringly obvious. And I'd read a bit about spiritual awakening experiences. I knew a little, a tiny bit. And uh, I'd heard about the veil being lifted, this veil, this illusory veil being lifted. And there, that it was absolutely obvious that that's when people were trying to describe the veil being lifted, the veil was lifted and there was no time. And the rocks and the trees, I actually knew the rocks and the trees. It was very obvious that there was, I was the rocks and the trees and I knew them and they knew me. In essence, there wasn't the rocks and the trees and me, there was whatever there is. And it was indescribable, but the only way I could describe it, and by the way, this didn't last any time at all. This is while I'm walking. Yeah. So I couldn't actually pinpoint when it happened. So I couldn't say it happened and it lasted for 10 seconds or a minute, or mm. it didn't last any time. And yet it was completely, um, well, I, I was never the same again in that it was like, okay, that's, it's very obvious. That's undeniably, it's undeniably how this is. It's undeniably how life is. And of course, as soon as I was back separate as me and really felt embodied again, all I could do was try and make sense of it. So although I said, when I described it and I wrote it down, I, and I, I tried to tell other people, of course, as well, because it's so wonderful. So yeah. <laughs> this wonderful news to tell people and I'm not joking even the people I thought would be wow not interested at all no one showed any interest I can imagine it's, it's completely blown my mind I'm it's it's literally mind-blowing there's no and it was um I couldn't escape from it even though it was it was obvious it hadn't happened as well. That's that's the other thing. Although this had happened, it was really obvious it hadn't happened. And so I tried to express this to other people, <laughs> and no one was interested. So then I realised, okay, there's only I'm the only one who's interested in this. And then and then it became an obsession. And then I was an obsessive seeker. And of course, once I found what I'd call radical non-duality, speakers like um, Tony, Tony Parsons, um, Lisa Cairns, I, that was, I probably resonated more with her than anyone else initially. Um, um, I listened to everyone. I bought every book. I had a massive library. I've now given all my books to my friend who's still a seeker. <laughs> he had all, he had everyone. Yeah, so I was a really good Amazon customer, buying everything. And then I'd spend all my evenings, I was still teaching um, and spending all my evenings on YouTube. Mm. So when, when seekers, when people listen to me or come to me and say about it, you know, that I, I, all I do is listen to YouTube, I mean, oh, that's very familiar. Yeah. It sounds familiar also. My, my, um, my wife called me a non-duality porn addict and she said she really wished that I, I was just like a normal bloke and, re and just watch porn rather than this non-duality <laughs> nonsense. At least she couldn't understand why I would do that. But she... And um, the one thing about this, if, if, it, if it bites you, if you are bitten, there's absolutely no antidote. There's no escape. Um, and I really did, I did try to escape because it, 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 it did destroy what I would have called my life. There's no doubt about that. Mm. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't treat this lightly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. because it, it is destructive seemingly, seemingly to me because it, it actually takes everything that you've called yours everything that you've said was yours 
is very is will be seen can only be seen to be an illusion that you you never had anything very simply because there was no you to actually own anything and that's the freedom of which we speak but it's a terrible freedom for me for me and it, yeah for me for me this is a this is a terrible message and yet if it resonates if it if it's if it's heard it can't be unheard that's, that's just how it seems for everyone who hears it. If it's not heard, then it's just dismissed. It's, you know, and me carries on. It's fine. And mo <laughs> I would say, fortunately for most me's, they don't hear it. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was quite a long, but there we yeah, go. Yeah, it, it was perfect. No, it was perfect. It resonates so much. Um, beautiful. Okay, the last... Uh, my last question, it's a little bit longer, but uh, I'll try to formulate it uh, in a way that it will be easy and clean for you. So recently, many people have glimpses. Uh, let's say that life is not just uh, birth and death and what is between them. And they start seeking. One, one could say that the seeking is start somehow. Yeah. And it's, it leads to various kind of YouTube videos, reading tons of books, yeah. uh, looking for many and trying many practices. And um, one could say astrology or numero numerology or religion also, yeah. meditations and so forth and so forth. But, mm -hmm. and it seems like this seeking never ends. You are jumping like from one thing to another thing, yeah, one yeah. teacher to another teacher. Yeah. So my question basically is, is, is there something called an awakening? And does seeking drop when that this awakening happens? And is anything happen at all? <laughs> well, I've just described mine, so <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I can't say no then. But I will say no anyway, because the answer is yes in the story. It seems that way. Really, no. No. Because really, I mean, there is only, so there's, because of course awakening can seem to happen just as the story I've just told you mm. about Tim's apparent awakening. But it might be obvious, it might be that what seemed to happen didn't really happen anyway. Hmm. And so, and then of course, then that's when the seeker may become really desperate and there may be despair because while it's happened, it can happen again, can't it? Yeah. And that's really all, really all we're talking about as a seeker is, okay, I've had a glimpse of reality. Wow. <laughs> and it was wow, it was wow. It was amazing, and, it's and, I want, and I want it back. That's it, really. It's no different to going to a party, and you went to a great party, and you were as high as a kite. You weren't even taking drugs, but it was just amazing. The buzz, the atmosphere, it, it was wow. And what do you do from then on? You go to more parties looking for that again. Well, of course, that that never was. You'll never find that again. There isn't a that to find. So the seeking is always futile because you're seeking what has happened. And there isn't anything that has happened. So you can't find it. And um, I think that's the terrible dilemma as a seeker. Yeah. And terrible. almost terrible. awakening or glimpses or whatever. We, because for me, I use the word awakening for that, that sense of the veil being lifted, a revelatory, a, an experience of revelation, you could say. Mm -hmm. Something has been revealed. <laughs> you don't know what, you can't put it into words really, but there's a revelation. And then, um, and then there's a seeming loss of what has been revealed. And because it was so incredible, literally incredible, because incredible means not understandable. You can't know it. You, you don't know what's happened. But then you go in search of it. 
as if you do know what it was. I mean, and there is as though there was that to find again. So you go back to the place, you go back to the speaker where they happened. You know, maybe it was in someone's presence. So that someone becomes special. You go back to the place, that place becomes the special place. So it's in that place, not in this place. Mm -hmm. It's in that person, not in that person. And so we create all these stories of specialness, which of course we've done throughout, that's all me ever does. Me has an intense desire for specialness, for significance. And um, one of the reasons this is such a devastating message for self is it can be very, very obvious that there isn't anyone to be special. And the, the, the loss of the, of the hope of specialness, you could say that's, that's the real killer for me. That's, but if it becomes completely undeniable that that is the case, that there aren't any special people, it might, it can, it can, it might be seen first that that I can't be special. There isn't a me to be special. It's much more likely that the you made special, they they are shown to be absolutely ordinary. And how do how how many stories do we know of seekers who have followed a guru, followed a special one, the chosen one, the special one, only to realise that they're an absolutely ordinary, flawed human being just the same as everyone else. And that is totally devastating. True. And then they blame, but then what me does, rather than see that, okay, that's what human beings are just exactly what they are, very ordinary, flawed human beings. We then make them, the they're the problem. So I go off to find the real special one. Because I, because I have to, I, because of course, if there is, if there are special people, then I can be a special person. And that's what I desire most. That's really what me is. Me is, <laughs> me is obsessed with specialness and it doesn't want this ordinary, very ordinary, everyday, mundane life. So spirituality says there's something else mm -hmm. hidden <laughs> behind, deeper, higher. Of course. Not, <laughs> yeah, and and uh, and um, I can listen to special people who have found it, and they'll show me the way. They have special keys that will unlock the door. They have keys to the gateless gate. If you're into being non-duality, you know yeah, the yeah, gateless. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there aren't any keys. There isn't a gate. There isn't even a gateless gate. There's nowhere to go through. You don't go through. There is no one to travel through a gate. I love the story of the, um, there's a lovely Zen Buddhist story. I'll really simplify it. I simplify everything. Okay. <laughs> and um, the, the, the novice is on the other side of the river and he shouts to the master on the other side of the bank, master, how do I get to the other side? And the master just shouts back, you are on the other side. <laughs> but you are there. You are, you are on the other side. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> wow. And um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it resonates so much. I, I, I have no explanation why I'm laughing so much listening to you, <laughs> but it's uh, coming. Well, the thing is, is it, it is know. terribly, like, life is terribly funny. True. <laughs> um, but of course, that doesn't mean that it's not, mm, because to, the way that this is spoken about <laughs> or the message is that there isn't, you know, it sounds hopeless. And in a way, this is a message that destroys hope. And, and self lives on hope. You know, that's, yeah. and, and hope is in, a, in an imagined future. 
you know, the future is imaginary. We all know that. Now, every human being knows the future is imaginary. And yet, because the abs if it is imaginary, then hope can't exist. And it's, so that's, that's one of the most dreadful things. That's why nearly always this message is rejected by self mm -hmm. because it, it negates yeah. future. They're really, you know, everyone knows we've got cliched phrases. I'm sure they're the same in Bulgarian that um, tomorrow never comes. Absolutely, we have. Yeah, you have that. I reckon every, every nationality, every human being knows this. There isn't tomorrow, obviously. <laughs> I mean, Eckhart Tolle has made an absolute fortune over this glaringly oh, obvious God. fact that there is only now. Well, you know, I speak about that, but I speak about it in a slightly different way. But it's just, I mean, that isn't mystical. <laughs> it is obvious. It's just, it's extraordinarily ob obvious that there is only this. But, and I say this rather than now, but it's just different words. Mm -hmm. There isn't a word for what we're speaking about because language in essence is dualistic. Yeah, it's very so one of the one of the great freedoms about speaking about this is that you can't get it wrong. And the reason you can't get it wrong is you can't get it right. There isn't a right way of speaking about this. Whatever words come out, they're this. Yeah no matter how so there's a there is an immense freedom in that yeah immense, really really but i admire um to let's say people like you who can speak in such a clear way because it's well, very difficult to speak like this very it's no it's, it's not funny. difficult it's like uh, um it's difficult to put I, in words yeah yeah, and maybe, well, well, people who have heard me speak about this for a few years now say that I'm better now than I was years ago, a few years ago. But there's no, there's no noticing of that here. There's none. It's just whatever, whatever said is said. Mm -hmm. I, they really aren't my words, and I know that that always sounds as though it's. Um, no, it's. It looks like they. They are yours. But they're coming. And, uh, yeah. yeah, but your the, the thing is, there's no different there. Lu, what Luciana calls Luciana's words, they're not hers <laughs> true. any more than these attempts. Yeah, true. And then, uh, and of course, dealing with other human beings then is much easier. Mm. It's much easier when the words are not that person's words. True. Also true, very true. It's um there is there is no there is no guilt and blame. Mm. And guilt and blame are the cause of most suffering. Yeah. And and the only reason we have guilt and blame is so that we can have an answer. Oh, it's his fault. Oh, it's my fault. Yeah. He did that. He could have done this, but he did that. Well, the very simple message is he couldn't have done other than he did. There was no one actually choosing it. Yeah. And um, again, that's another reason self usually rejects this straight away because I need responsibility. Otherwise, how can I make sense of the world? Who am I going to blame? Because really I, I've either got to blame myself or yeah. some other people yeah. or yeah. God. Yeah. You know, I think the reason we have God is because so we can blame somebody. Yeah. Somebody's got to be creating this. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be totally wild and free. That would be anarchy. Mm. Well, believe it or not, anarchy is freedom. They're, they're one and the same. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of a lot of seekers say they want freedom. That's what they're seeking, but they're not. They're actually seeking specialness. That's disguise, also true. <laughs> disguise as freedom. <laughs> Free, freedom is, is completely ordinary. Mundane. I like this word very much in English. Yeah, the mundane. And of course, the mundane is the extraordinary. The mundane is the wonder. 
everything is wondrous. Mm. Mm. I don't quote many people, but Einstein said either everything is a miracle or not. I think it's Einstein, Albert Einstein. Because in his later life, he became very mystical, like many great scientists. So they spend their life trying to answer all the great questions. And then they realized that the, it was all for naught. <laughs> yeah. Don't get me wrong. They answered some really difficult questions and were very clever. But it, it mattered little. And he, he, he became very mystical in later life. And of course, science didn't like that. <laughs> and he said, either everything is a miracle or nothing. Everything is a miracle. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Tim, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, lovely. Well, thanks for asking me. And um, yeah, I look forward to it. Yeah, so do I. So I will repeat again, but I will put it also in. Uh... And um, if anybody wants to come to my Zoom meetings, I do yeah. Zoom, me Zoom meetings on a Monday and uh, Thursday, 7 p.m. British time. Yeah, lovely. Twice per week. You can find the invitations are on my Facebook. And well, they will be on maybe tomorrow. And, and on YouTube. Mm. And, um, yeah. Okay. Thank you so, so, so much. Oh, you're welcome. Wishing you a lovely sunny day. It's a terrible day. It's torrential rain here. Really? Yeah, it's yeah. almost flooded. I just yeah, drove here. Funny. I just yeah. drove here and the roads yeah. were um, flooded, yeah. We are very happy with a beautiful autumn here. It's a lovely sunny day. Nice. Oh, lovely. I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah. It's not yeah. going to last long, you know. No. No. Yeah. Thanks. See you. See you soon. Thank you very much. Yeah, see you soon. Lovely. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.